Hey guys, what's going on? I just played a game on chess.com. It was a five minute game and I lost. So I'm gonna go back now and analyze the game to see what I did wrong. And I'm gonna show you how you can do that for your games too. So we're gonna be using Stockfish, it's a computer, and it's gonna analyze the game as we go. And I'm gonna show you exactly what process you can follow to really learn from your mistakes and see what you should have done during the game that you didn't do and, and how that can really help you. So let's jump right in. All right, so after you play the game, and I'm gonna drag this over so you can see, there's the analysis button right here. So you're gonna click on that, it's gonna open a new tab, and then go ahead and click on the self analysis box. And that just kind of lets you do your own thing. Uh, it it kind of keeps it a little bit cleaner. And I'm gonna drag it over so you can see the whole board better. All right, so the first thing that I wanna point out, if you look up here at the top right, you've got this little settings icon, okay? You can click on that, and you have a couple of choices. The first one that I want you to, to look at is the self-analysis depth. So this just means how many moves deep is the engine gonna look? And it starts at 14 is the lowest, and then the higher numbers are better. Obviously it looks at more moves, and so you get a more accurate prediction of, of what the best move is. You can have it unlimited and let it just go as high as it wants. It does start taking a lot of time. So I'm gonna put it, for this video, I'm gonna put it on 22 and just let it stop at 22. Um, very rarely will you ever have to go past something like 22. So I think that's fine for 99% of people. Now, the next thing is self-analysis line. So I have it set on three. So let me go back here and you can see there's one, two, three lines that it's showing. So it's basically showing me the top three moves that the computer is recommending. And I like to leave that because sometimes there's like two moves or even three moves that are all really good and really close. And I like to be able to see like, okay, what's the first move? What's the next move? Okay, because sometimes I play a good move, but maybe it's not the best move. And I like to be able to see that. Now, if it's a little bit too confusing for you, if you're just starting out, this is the first time you've ever analyzed the game, maybe you wanna set it to one, just so it's a little easier to follow. So I could go here, change this to one. And now you see there's only one line I have to pay attention to. It's the absolute best move. You don't have to worry about the top two, top three. You can just look at one. So if that's, you know, if that's you, like I said, if this is the first time that you're analyzing a game, maybe start there. But for this example, I'm gonna put it back to three because that's what I normally leave it on. And so we can see the, the best three moves, okay? So now I'm gonna go through the game and I'm just gonna click ahead, move at a time, and I'm gonna be looking at these numbers over here. So you see right now the top one says 0.31. It's, it's white, it's a plus 0.31. That means it's a slight advantage for white. And that makes sense because at the start of the game, it's considered that white has a slight advantage. And as I click through, you're gonna see that number changes. Every time we make a move, it's gonna change a little bit or maybe it's gonna change a lot. And what I'm looking for is those moments when it changes a lot. And a lot would be probably more than one point, uh, more than a one point swing. So if it goes from 0.38 to you know two or three, that's a, that's a big change, right? So let's keep going, 0.38, 0.38, 0.38.3 so it's kind of bouncing around and that's because it's analyzing and every time the depth gets further it changes and now it hits the max depth 22 and it stops so 0.28 okay so let's keep going and again I'm just looking for big big changes so there it changed it it switched to black a little bit but it wasn't a big number so that wasn't a big deal and we're still in the opening so sometimes the the engine can be wrong in the opening but it's really good when you get to if you make a blunder, it's really good at, at helping you see that. So right now we haven't seen any blunders, so I'm just gonna keep going. And I'm looking for big changes. Uh, so 0 0.25, 0 0.35. Okay, so here's a fairly big jump. And I'll, I'll back up to show you. So let's go ahead and let it get to the max depth, just so you can see the exact change. So it's depth is 21, 22, there we go. So 0.28. Okay, so 0.28 for white, it's a slight advantage for white. And watch what happens when I click this, this next move. You see how it switched to black and now it's minus one, minus 1, minus 1.25. It's still analyzing, yeah, my, okay, minus 0.86. So not as bad, but it's it, it was a fairly big jump. So that means I did something wrong when I played this move. Now, from my perspective, when I'm looking at the game, I don't see the problem, right? It looks like a good move to me. I'm moving my pawn to the center. 
it's well defended, like why would that be a bad move? So what I'm gonna do is see what it says. Well, it says C takes D4. So C takes D4 is supposed to be good for black. Well, I still don't get it, right? From my point of view, I'm like, this looks fine for me. So the way that I'm gonna learn is by doing the move that I would have played anyway. So I'm like, well, it looks like I can just take this pawn with my knight, so I'm gonna do that. And now I'm gonna see what the computer says. So if I jump up here, I see, oh, queen to e5 is minus 1.75. So this is almost a two point advantage for black. So queen to e5. And at this point, I'm trying to figure out why the computer is recommending that move, right? I, I see that it's attacking my knight, but my knight's defended. I see that it's attacking this pawn, but I also have like an attack, a discovered attack on his queen. So let's just say that I didn't get it, right? I didn't get it. I'm playing the game and I'm like, I don't, I don't see why the computer thinks that's a good move. How do I figure it out? What you do is play the move that you would normally play, right? So in this position, I'm thinking I'm going to take this knight and create a discovered attack on his queen. That looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to do that. And watch this number. You see how it went to minus five? That means I'm like losing a rook. And what is the move? Queen takes b2. Queen takes, oh, okay. So now I'm starting to realize what's going on, right? Now I'm seeing my rook's under attack, my knight's under attack. It's starting to make sense to me. But if you're, you know, if you're going through your game and it doesn't make sense to you, you just keep going, right? Keep playing moves. So maybe you would say like, well, it looks like, uh, you know, I can play queen d4 and like attack the queen and save the rook and maybe that makes sense. What's he gonna do? It looks like a good position for me. Go back up here. Oh, queen c1 check. Oh, okay. Now I'm starting to see like, it's looking like I'm getting into some trouble. And if you still don't get it, you know, you keep following it until you finally get it, right? And it finally makes sense to you. So I'm gonna go back because I'm seeing what the problem is. So I see what my mistake was. And I see that, you know, playing d4 wasn't my best option. But I'm gonna move on because I wanna get to the, later in the game when there was a little more interesting position. So he captures, and again, I'm looking up here, knight takes, and this was the, the part where he should have played queen e5, he didn't, he played knight f6, and you see how it jumps back to now I'm slightly ahead. So we'll move on, and again, I'm looking for big jumps. So that was a small jump, right? See this one, it's point, uh, two, and it jumps to minus, minus 0.5, I mean, that's less than one, I'm not going to spend a lot of time worrying about that. If it's less than a one point jump, you can ignore it. So I'm just kind of moving ahead. Most of these moves were pretty good. That one wasn't the greatest for him, but again, it's it's a small change. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to move ahead. Okay, so I'm slightly ahead, but nothing really. Okay, so right here, I'll show you this one. Let's go ahead and let it get to depth 22, just to make sure it doesn't miss anything. All right, so 1.25, that means I'm ahead roughly a pawn, a little more than a pawn, right? If I make the best move. And after I moved queen d3, check it out. It jumps to, looks like dead equal. I was ahead 1.25, now it's equal. So that move cost me a 1.25 advantage, but now it's slightly better for black. So why was that a bad move? So what I'm gonna do is go back, and I'm gonna see what did it say I should have done to get that 1.25 advantage. So there's two moves that are showing up that is pretty close, castling and playing F4. Now, I'm interested in F4 because I actually considered playing this move in the game, but I thought he was gonna take here, and after I took, he's just gonna take my pawn, right? So why why is it saying F4 if he's just gonna do that? It just looks good for him. So what am I, what am I gonna do? Move it, and then do the move. So he's gonna capture here, what does it say I do? It says I take back, okay, as expected. And then I thought he was gonna take my pawn. And now it's saying rook to c1. So that's the move that I didn't see. I thought I was gonna take back and he's gonna take me, but it's saying rook to c1. So why is that a good move? I'm thinking he's just gonna take my pawn and I'm, I'm losing a pawn, right? So what do I do? Make the move, all right, he takes my pawn. And what does it say? Oh, plus five, almost plus, now it's plus six for me. And the move is bishop takes f6. Aha, I see why that is you know, good. Now, if you didn't see, like maybe when you're analyzing your games, you don't see right away the, why the computer thinks it's a good move. That's okay, just follow the line until it makes sense, right? So I'm gonna capture it. Let's say 
just for the sake of example, let's say I didn't notice that the queen was under attack. And I just saw like, oh, I'm just taking the knight. Looks like he's just going to take my bishop. Why am I giving up a bishop for a knight? I already lost some bonds. What do you do? Follow out the variation, right? So do the move that you think your opponent would do and then see what it says. Oh, rook takes c6. Oh, there's a queen hanging, right? Now I see it. And so this is how you learn, guys. Like, go through your game. And just every time you get to those moments where you disagree with the computer, right? Like you think the best move is, you know, A, and the computer says, no, you should have played B. Then go through and follow the line just like I'm doing here to see until you get to that moment when it's like, ah, I see the queen was under attack. It was a discovered attack. That was the whole point behind playing F4 and letting this happen, right? And sometimes you have to go a couple moves deep before it makes sense. So... But this is, I mean, this is how you learn. Like every single time you play a game, you can learn some valuable stuff if you take the time to do this. So let's go back. I learned, you know, what, what I should have done. I should have played F4. So we'll go back to this position here. I didn't play F4. I played Queen D3. All right. So let's move on, see if there's anything else that I, you know, messed up. And again, I'm just looking at that top number and I'm looking for big changes, right? Really big changes. So, so far, everything... And to be honest with you guys right now, when I'm looking up here at this number, I'm not even looking at the board, right? I'm not even looking at the board. I'm looking at this number only. And I'm doing the math in my head to figure out if it's a big change, right? So minus 0 0.7, 0 0.48 plus, okay, that's not a big change. Minus 0 0.9, that's, uh, no, it's now it's 0.4, so not really that big of a change. Okay, that was a big change right there. So once I see the big change, then I go back to the board and like start thinking about, okay, what was going on at this position, right? So at this moment, you see it's better for black, minus 0.68, minus 0.39, if he castles, okay? So I'm looking at the board. If he would have just castled, it's better for black. He didn't castle, he played before, and this is really good for me. Why is it good for me? Well, this is actually, knight b5, this is actually the move that I played in the game. Uh, so I, I found it, I saw the reason, it looked... Um, like knight b5 was pretty strong because I was setting up a fork here, which is like a triple fork And it also creates an attack on the bishop. So I played knight b5, you know, if he takes here, I'm gonna go there So I actually saw that one um, But we'll move on bishop c6 again. The the best move is knight d6 check. I actually saw that one. So um, He took it. I took it. These are the top moves Bishop b5 And now I played e5. Okay, so here's another moment. Check it out it's plus four, roughly, plus 3.94. So I have, that's a, a piece, almost a rook advantage, right? Rooks are five points and I'm up four points. And then as soon as I played this move, e5, check it out. It goes down to not even a one point advantage. So I just gave up really three points by playing this move. So this is a good you know, position where I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna say, okay, what, what did I do wrong? So the move is queen takes b4. Now. I saw this in the game and I thought, like, if I do that, he's just gonna take my rook, right? I'm just gonna lose a rook for a bishop. I mean, yeah, I'm gonna get the pawn, but it didn't look that great for me. So what I'm gonna do is say, what, why is that so good? So I'm gonna move it and I'm gonna make the move that I thought my opponent was gonna do, take my rook, and I'm gonna see what the computer says. So it's saying bishop takes f1. Okay, well, again, I still don't see why that's so good for me. Like, it looks to me like he's gonna just take this pawn. So I'm gonna take it and see what it says. Sorry, I'm gonna take it, make the move that I think he's gonna do, and then I'm gonna see what it says. Rook to a1. Okay, so check that out. It's uh, kind of trapping the queen, right? I didn't see that, but now I'm like starting to realize, hmm, looks pretty good. Let's go back. Uh, you know, in this position here, I still lost my rook, so I'm still thinking like, well, maybe he, he doesn't take the pawn. Like, what if he just moves his queen here? Why is that good for me? plus five and then the move is rook to c8 check well hold on a second that just looks like i'm blundering my rook right why is that a good move well let's find out if he takes it what am i what am i going to do plus five still for me queen takes a5 ah and now i realize right oh his rook was defending sorry his rook was defending the queen but by sacrificing that it's no longer defending it. i get the queen and so all this happened by sacrificing that rook for the, you know, the uh, bishop and pawn. But now I'm starting to see why that was so good for me, 
right? And so this is how you learn uh, from your games, right? Like whenever you get to moments where you see big changes in the evaluation, those are learning opportunities. Now, you know, some of you guys who are kind of just starting out and are lower rated, you're gonna see those big changes happen almost every move, right? And that's okay. Like think of it as every move being a learning opportunity, right? Like when I analyze my games, usually I'll see a couple of those throughout the game, but they don't happen every move, right? Some of you guys who are, who are lower rated, like I said, you're gonna see a lot of those, but just think of it as like lots of learning opportunities, right? Every single time you see a big change, you can go and figure out why by just following the evaluation, making the moves that you think like, if you don't understand why, make the move, follow it out. You saw the example, um, but this is like probably one of the best things you can do to really improve. I mean, every single time you play a game, you have an opportunity to learn. So, but anyway, I think I'm kind of beating a dead horse. I hope you get the idea. Let me know in the comments if you like this kind of video, if it was helpful, or if there was something that's you know not clear about this process. Um, I I try to go you know step by step as much as I could, but let me know if there's something that like. I didn't cover or I went too fast over or whatever. Just let me know and I'll, you know, try to answer those. But anyway, I hope that helps you guys. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.